Okay, we're live. Hi. We're live. <laughs> I'm just going to check um, that things okay. Hello, Thanks. and welcome to Anarcho Agony Aunt with Rowan and Marianne. I'm Rowan. I'm Marianne. We are just checking some technical things. Yeah, I think we're good. Are you, are you in the picture? I am in the picture. Is there sound? Send. Oh yeah, is there sound? We have some minor sound issues, but we'll just be sorting them now. Yeah, that's sound. There's sound. One viewer. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, you. Right. Um, sorry, like, this is a low-budget production as it is. Ooh, actually, do pay us, though. I will post, like, a coffee link if you would like to, if you'd be interested in at least covering our test keys. Without these, we couldn't be helping you. No. So, um... I wonder if that's say about our qualifications of back in the end. Uh, cover our this key uh, expenses, please. That's a love for a Okay. 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 So, long time no see. Long time eh? no see. How are you? How are you guys? In the comments. Yes, please comment, tweet, retweet, share this around. This is our way of, of you know, of creating an anti-fascist project that is that is uh, accessible, diversity of tactics, all of that stuff. And we're interested in talking to mostly young men that have veer have veered off maybe towards some more unsavory uh, YouTube personalities mm -hmm. that are giving bad relationship advice. We would argue Jordan Peterson even does now relationship advice. Yeah. In a later episode, we might be answering a question, a question or two that he has also answered. So you can decide who's got the better take, us or JP. Yeah, basically. I mean, like, oh, but we have been extremely overwhelmed by all the awesome questions that you guys keep sending us. That's why we bring up the uh, show over and over again. However, we're thinking if we are, you know, lacking some questions, or in general, I think it would be really fascinating. There have been some questions that have been asked. Jordan and mm -hmm. we want to like yeah we think that would be like an interesting thing to like yeah offer I wonder if we should like look at his at his answers to those particular questions before we answer it yeah because then what if it's like really similar well, it won't be. but then that would be kind of funny right? that would be kind of funny yeah uh yes please let us know if there are some particular issues wait I can see there's a private no? Okay, we're good. That's not really <laughs> that's, not, that's <laughs> captain stuff. Hey. <laughs> um, yes, okay, so... Um, okay, we're ready for question one. That, wait, okay, wait. I need to decompress it, I need to open a this key. Um, and uh, yes, uh, there is a Curious Cat link. Should I post a Curious Cat link? Yeah, might as well. That Feel free to always ask us questions. And sorry, we're still sort of getting into it. And also we'll be posting all of the questions and answers on YouTube as separate videos, yes. right? Look at our YouTube channel, YouTube. I don't like any else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe whilst you read out the question, I'll post two things, which is the Curious Cat link and the YouTube channel. Okay. So, question number one. Thank you for your channel, it's epic. Smiley face. Here's a question I've always been scared to ask anyone. I've never got with a woman in a club slash night out situation, and I think I'd like to try that. I've got off with a bloke, which was hot as fuck, but let's be honest, social rules in gay bars are simpler, winky face. So yeah, how does one go about that? How do you get someone's attention and start proper conversations in a club, and not be creepy, etc? It's all a long way out of my comfort zone, to be honest. I'm in a small city, we do have a nightlife, but nothing like London. So... We have answered similar questions to this in the past, and I would recommend looking at our channels with, with questions something like how to flirt, um, without looking like a creep, would probably be one of the main ones I would refer to. Which I think is our most popular video. So yeah, interesting. interesting. I guess a lot of you don't want to be creeps, but also want to get laid, which I heartily approve of. Like, me too. Yeah, so usually we would refer someone to completely just, uh, you know, look at those past questions. However, I think we did decide that this has... Uh, Similar, uh, some differences that uh, I think would need to be uh, addressed. Uh, first and foremost, it really just cuts into the whole like club situation, right? So I think Zadie, you and me will both agree that um, you know places where people smoke and sort of quieter places outside are usually a lot of the time uh, the places to be. And um, yeah, I've never successfully hit on someone on a dance floor. Have you? Yes. Yeah. Oh God. How'd it work? <laughs> Fine. And until the next day, his friends told him never to see me again because they all hated me. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. 
So it's you know, back on the like search. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so especially if it's a small town, right? You don't want to be like seen with someone who's maybe already snapped up or something. Um, it's absolutely, I think it's fine to ask, you know, are you here with someone? Uh, so, you know, that, then that's a polite way for the person to answer whether they're like, you know, available or not. Or maybe they're just with their, you know, with their friends and they're completely not in the mood to be, uh, you know, approached in that manner um, or, or, or anything like that. Um, I would say, you know, a good compliment never hurts. And again, you don't need to be like, oh, you know, like fucking oh, nice boobs. Yeah, a good compliment is a quite specific thing. Yes, they're basically something that shows... Again, we always go back to that thing, empathy, right? Something where you, you truly admire that someone has made uh, you know, an effort towards something that is, that, that, that is of beauty to them, mm-hmm. to both you and them, right? Yeah, like, I love it when someone compliments an aspect of my outfit because I generally, despite appearances, care all about my outfits and generally think they're well put together. So if someone's like, oh, I love that top, or like, I love the way your earring fresh on lipstick, I'll be like, me too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. something about like, there's a certain sort of attempt to own the night together sort of mm. thing, right? Uh, I hate to be that guy, but sadly that sort of like feeling us against the world does work a lot of the time and it is so cliche, you know, but a lot of the time, especially if the party is not necessarily happening, you know, you really kind of want to like be kind of a bit bitchy about it. Yeah, <laughs> so, so like self-deprecating or like a, bit, a little bit like... <laughs> like maybe it's not like the best politics in the world, but yeah. No. Well, self-deprecation I think is is is, yeah. good, is good politics as such. And like always, I think always really. Um, I hate to be again. It's a cliche s- a sentence, but treat them how you'd like to be treated, right? So where there is a space for the person to to you know to back off if the if the if, if the attention is uh, is unnecess- is is kind of unrequited. Mm. Uh, however. Um, yeah, however, I think just being attentive and be really showing that, I don't know, there's no one around pretty much, that that is the only person that you're interested in, um, make them feel special without doing the whole negging thing, right? That we've discussed again mm-hmm. in previous episodes where, um, yeah, you don't want to, you know, kind of make them feel like, oh, they've been chosen in yeah. a sense of like, uh, now they owe you something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's definitely not the Sorry, and a different point is that like it also like might take a period of a few hours or something. Like I would find it quite off-putting if someone comes onto me all at once. But like say I'm next to someone at a bar and they make a funny little joke, and then half an hour later I bump into for the queue of the toilets and we roll our eyes, and then maybe after that I might see them in a smoking area or dance with them. But like build up interactions, making clear you're looking at them, but not that you're stalking them. Like yeah, I think because I I warm to people, I don't anyone coming on at me straight away I would view it as suspicion unfortunately. Yes right. absolutely um, yeah that's such a good point that straight away going from 0 to 100 probably is a bit yeah. much you do want to build it up obviously it's very sad if then they leave or whatnot and you've never had the chance. Um, that has happened with me as well I've been like working my way you're working oh they're gone. Yes <laughs> yes um, yeah I don't know if you have like queer parties possibly in your town but those always usually have a more a more I suppose I don't know, quite, I guess quite lustful feel about them, I don't know, like basically there's a certain sort of sense of, of, of like, intimacy. I, I think suppose. it's because they're like kind of safer spaces in a sense. Yes. Because there's not going to be men being predators towards women Yes, absolutely. Only. Just that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like basically, yeah, people are, are, are able to have, to be open about their sexuality without feeling like, uh, but to be fair, I probably sounded quite a bit dodgy there, so like, oh, go to those parties to like hook up with people. That's kind of, that's totally not what I meant as in like, the reason why those are places where people like feel comfortable is because people don't just go there for that purpose. So I don't mean it like that. But also, from your question, it sounds like you're not wholly straight since you've mentioned hooking up with guys. So that's yes. a legitimate Yeah, suggestion. that's true, actually. Yeah, yeah. And it seems in general, you seem to be self-reflective enough that I don't mind recommending you particularly towards uh, towards that sort of spaces. But yeah, obviously don't go like queer watching or like fetishizing other people's like sexualities either. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the question always helps, you know, so something, you know, instead of just like, how was your day, you can just go, what was the high point of your day or what was the low point mm. of your day, you know, or, or what's the high point of this party thus far? Or what's your point? least favorite song that's played so far? Like, yeah. I mean, something that like, yeah. Starts a bit more of an interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, in terms of kissing, was well, this that is, the question? Well, it's just like how to get off with someone in the club, right? Mm. I mean, that's just the magic moment that we're always still looking for, even ourselves, right? Yeah. Like, 
that when everything goes together and you can feel like it's probably gonna go there, that is just that mm, yeah. that moment. Nobody it's wants to lunge out of nowhere, but everyone wants to like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, isn't it like such a special, such a special moment that first kiss with someone like in that kind of environment where it's all like really hot? Like, I don't I don't know. Know. I've never had a really hot nightclub. Ex- I've had one really hot nightclub experience, but in the walkers. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, there's just something so ephemeral about it, something so indescribable and so special and it really, there's a chemistry to it that there's no way anyone could explain to you as to how to get there, right? So, mm. um, but I definitely please, I think, unless you're 100% sure that someone is up for it, ask them, you know, um, well, how do you feel about, you know, no, I'm sorry, I, mean, I hate to be the unconsensual know. feminist, but I, 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 like, okay, listen, listen, <laughs> as someone who is not particularly, um, I don't like feeling like I have to voice my opinion in a situation which I don't feel comfortable yet, so like, for example, when I first join a new group, I don't always speak of the meetings, but after six months, I then do. If someone I barely know, even from the best of their bottom of their feminist little heart, says, like, would you, like... It, if I kiss you, I feel very much put on the spot and like, I know that this is like what the feminist yeah. books tell you to, but it makes me feel very uncomfortable and close up and I'll be like, oh no, even if I actually do want to kiss them just because, it's, like, I'm not saying oh, don't ask them <laughs> but I'm just saying like, there is a way of like, sensing your way to a kiss that doesn't always, I mean, if in doubt, ask. Yeah. But if, she, if you do it slowly and obviously, she, she, she will give you a signal either way at some point. Yeah, and I guess you should be already touching different parts. Yeah, I was going to like, actually, if anyone would be unconsensual. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, you can do like that, and then yeah. you can do like that, and then yes. like, you know. Mm. Oh, an ear, nothing <laughs> quite like an ear touch. Mm. Yeah, and like, there'll, there'll be the Neck. flinch oh. if she doesn't like it. Yes, right? yes, yes, that's true. So, I mean, I'm not saying... Okay, I'm just getting, I'm getting though. a bit... I saw that touching I just did. Honestly, I just like, I miss it. I miss that, like, you know, basically, I'm ki- I keep thinking about like, dancing on my own parties that used to happen back in London, back in the day, like Beth Mill Green. Um, well, yeah, it was, the vibe was just that, and all the time, and I don't know. It was just something, I mean, I'm just, yeah, I don't know. I'm just basically a bit... Nostalgic. Maybe I'm nostalgic, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting a bit, although I'm also aware of my, like, hashtag image and all that like I feel I can't really relax in spaces anymore because I feel like at all times there'll be a certain basically you can't hook up how you used to like you can outside of the scene but not in the scene mm. as such because like people make assumptions very very quickly and I don't know um well that's the other thing right you said you don't in London you're in a smaller city like how small is the city like would everyone in the club know you do you have to take into account like the politics of your area like and I don't know what kind of clubs you're going to like because obviously every area has its own Every space has its own social n- norms that you need to adhere to. Yeah. And like, do you go to these places with a group of friends? Because no girl wants like eight. Like, some girls want eight guys calling her, but it's not normally something you assume. Like, <laughs> <laughs> definitely ask first in that situation. Yeah. So like, yeah, like I'm not really into like chatting with someone if I see all his friends like watching me do that. Like, like I don't know. <laughs> also, and. Um- I'm just going to cause really neurotic right now. Like, I don't go clubbing, okay? Like, I'm trying my best. Um, and then, just obviously, that's a very obvious point, but feel, you know, leave the house feeling extremely, like, confident and beautiful yourself. Like, if you, if you don't feel confident, if you're, like, having to beg for, for sort of, for um, acknowledgement, that's not hot. That, that's not cool. Basically, like, have something on offer as such. Like, don't... Don't make it that the other person has to do all the work, basically. Because I've been in those situations where it's just like, I can tell someone is, you know, into me and it's lovely and that, and yet I'm having to do all the work. Yeah. And it's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> it's very confusing. I mean, I guess it's also a confidence thing. People feel different levels of confidence in different areas, but also don't give off a false confidence either in that sense if you can't follow yeah. through on the second date. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Sorry, uh, it's not cool to have indirect on a public show. <laughs> no, no, no. But no. yeah, um, it's not a thing. And like I do it too. Like I have like the funny party girl in well, I'm a party girl. The funny girl in one situation, I'm then like the quiet sheep in the corner in another situation. It's like confusing. Like, but yeah, try to be confident, but not not yourself as well. Like, don't. Yeah. 
Don't give a false ass impression. Yeah, don't give a f- f- false <laughs> full of words. Yeah. False first impression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also, I don't know, there's that thing where you realize that, yeah, that they're into, but like then you're having to complete it as such, and it's just, I find it, yeah, it's just annoying. Yeah. But then, I'm but wondering, then again, isn't that what guys, like, expect to have to do all the time? Is that, like, the girl just waits there? Like, this is, like, the stereotypical thing, it's like, she just waits and he has to complete it, he has to be the one that does the work, and she then just goes, oh, right. Well, we've spoken about this, right? The fact that pretty much all the people we've been with were the ones that actually went like, you know, It's true, yeah, that's true, yeah. We are initiative takers and yeah. breakers. I don't know, maybe back in the day, not anymore, I don't think so. Oh. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's true. Actually, I'm freaking hot in a while. Should get on it. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know. I'm hoping that was of use. Again, any follow-up questions? More than happy. Yeah. Please give us some feedback. Also, let us know how did the club outing go? You know, was any of this useful? Maybe, maybe you had a ho- hookup that actually didn't. You know, none of this advice was even necessary. Again, and we oh we fucking hate to do this, but like when you know, you just know, right? And it's just like there's nothing to really say about it and when there is chemistry when people two people are into each other again when someone like again we keep repeating somewhat the same rules right now but like if someone is into you and if someone fancies you there's literally you can't do any wrong but also that is true definitely like there is this like undescribable chemistry thing in a lot of situations but also i have been i have had sex with people that i'm not super with chemistry with because i feel like having sex right so like it also depends what you want like it's also okay to have a hookup with someone that you just kind of fancy and just would be like a laugh without having to be like this magical intense moment. I mean, this is me being a slut, but also like there's nothing wrong with that. So like, yeah, like you can look for this and hope you get this because this is the best thing. Marianne is the best thing. No, what she's talking about, but also her. But or um, or you can also just be like, you know what? I'm gonna laugh with this person. We can go shag. Funny you say that. I've, yeah, I guess actually, I've never felt free enough to do that in clubs because always like you're in a scene around people and any yeah a lot of your moves just get read as certain but I think because we're in the, a scene which yeah. is a different thing to being like in just like a regular nightclub right, right. Ooh, ooh. We, okay so Ron has already passed her driving license I'm going through that well, first time as well fuck what, hero I cried well, be- you killed it, so of course. Well, you didn't no, kill I, anyone, so... <laughs> oh, I cried before. yeah. Anyway, I nearly failed. I had to kind of emotionally blackmail him into letting me pass, but it, it works. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I am going through the process myself right now. I'm like halfway through my uh, course. And we're thinking we're probably going to do a little, hopefully, AAA tour around different towns. Because we've already got like two line, uh, two live shows uh, lined up. Um, Should we, I guess we can do the dates. I forgot. No. 17th of... No, 31st of... May. May. As part of the Anarchist Festival. Yes. Very exciting. Um, yeah, we're doing a live show here in London. Is that the one we booked in the world? Or the other one? I think both of them are like. In London Action Resource Centre. Yes. And one on the 17th of June. That is Anti University. Yes, part of the Anti University. Very, very cool project. Lots and lots of interesting talks, discussions, workshops. Look it up. Proper situationist stuff. Mm hmm. And yeah, so uh, basically, so, but we do want to travel around the country with AAA as such. And we're thinking maybe we could be taken to random clubs where we don't have to worry about London scene. Ooh, yeah. If you want to get us to do a live show and also take us to your local nightclub, yes. Let us know. Yes. So whoever's just written, to, but it's online, I guess, because right? then you'll have to show who you are. But I don't know. If there, yeah. Well, basically, DM people. Mariam or me on Twitter if you want to invite us to something without like. Yeah, I'm, well. yeah. Anonymity guaranteed. Take yeah. us to your flipping clubs, man. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fascinating. Like, you yeah. won't have to worry about, yeah, the, the scene as such. And, or, like, the clubs where, I guess, we wouldn't meet our people in the are just super expensive or whatnot. It's yeah. just, I don't know. I don't know. <gasps> oh my god! All the outfits are good bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we could be, like, totally anonymous somewhere else. Not that I'm not totally anonymous here, but, like, even more. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a brief interlude. Yes. Shall we? Okay, dogs. I'm gonna just check that everything is working, and then uh, we'll move on to the next question. It's like, I like my, my middle parting in real life, but I don't like it on camera. Yeah, but I thought the same thing about my hair. I thought it looked really cute and curly, but on camera it just looks like I've got like random bald patches, so you know. Thanks. We're still... Yeah. <laughs> yeah We're still... Like, the whole bald patch situation. Like, wait, oh, it isn't. It is a cute curl, and I especially love this bit. Oh, the bun. Yeah. I'm trying to grow up my fringe, so we're going to see some problematic side quiffs in the next few shows. <laughs> 
Right, so just checking everything is fine. 11 viewers! Thank you guys! Hello. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah? I think so. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna retweet it. the next question is quite a long and complicated one. So, it starts with some nice Oh, feedback. it's that one. It's the, yeah. Thank you so much for this question. This is the question of why we do the show. Yes, and also we're really sorry we didn't get to you sooner because we recognize it's quite time sensitive and we just, yeah, I hope that the situation has got better. Or so, if it hasn't, oh, because yeah. all the beans. Okay, now. so, somewhat across the channel and I love it. Your topics and discussions really speak to me and I can relate to everything you say. Hopefully I can catch up on the old one sometime soon. If you don't mind another topic request, I would like to get, I would if you don't mind another topic request, I would like to get your opinion on men going their own way. We so, couldn't know what that was. No, we well. Googled it. Yeah. Sorry if I'm being a bit more formal right now, but this is kinda of serious and I'd love your views. Some backstory. My boyfriend has started saying things like take women's rights away after living to, listening to people like Turd Flinging Monkey and Sandman, YouTubers. Over the last month he, over the last month he has completely changed. No matter what I say, he keeps on listening to these people and they are here on YouTube. Should I keep trying to talk to him about this? Should I tell somebody? Should I just dump him? Thanks for reading all that. Any advice would be great. Again, uh, yeah, this, these sort of questions is why we do this show and we're absolutely devastated to hear that you're having to go through this. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, I imagine this is a long-term relationship and there's basically been a major shift and you love someone and you think maybe it's just a phase, you know, maybe it's just... And, and we'll go through all this, you know, potentially it is. And, and, um, but this shift is something we have been seeing across young men, across the world, but, like, related to YouTube consumption, and it's very fast. And this, yeah, people turning to the all right through these, like, channels is, yeah. Yeah, you're not alone, basically, in this. You should definitely, um, yeah, that, that's, um, you shouldn't feel like, basically, there's something wrong with you in this particular situation, or that you're failing this relationship, and or, you know, that... Yeah, you're doing something wrong, or that you're the only one who's losing, you know, her guide to this mm. past, to, to, to this phenomenon, and whatnot. That's sadly a trend. I will say this kind of destroys a little bit the my stereotype where I think it's people that don't have partners a lot of the time, and are resentful that they don't have partners that are turning towards these channels because it seems to me like this person is lucky. Well, you know, the man. I, I'm, assu I, I'm not assuming. I guess it is a man. Yeah. Yeah. The man is, is lucky enough to have a, a loving and empathetic partner. I was quite, almost, well, distressed is not the right word, but like, her like apologizing about even asking and or it being like a longer text at the bottom just mm -hmm. shows how just way too kind and, and lovely this person is. Yeah. And, and like, you're very forgiving. Very forgiving. Uh, possibly you don't really understand your own worth um, and you're having to feel like you're having to apologize for stuff. Which is which is wrong. So um, should we give a brief? Yes. Uh, okay. So men going their own way is a part of the kind of uh, men's right activist red pill online community that has overlaps with the incel community, where it's essentially about men trying to live their lives and organize and structure themselves and cr uh, create communities outside of the influence of women, external to women, and celebrating their conception of what like being a man is through these men-only groups. However, you know, what sounds like it could just be, oh, you know, there's women's spaces, why can't there be men's spaces? It's very, very toxic, and these YouTubers in particular do videos on like interpreting what women mean when they ask when they ask one question but they really mean another and all these kind of things that are essentially gaslighting women on a mass scale. Well, you see, funny you use, the, you use that word gaslighting because uh, their fundamental argument would be is that women are professional gaslighters mm. and that, uh, you know, they make us... I don't know, that they, they convince us of a certain way of, of, of having a relationship and especially in the past couple of years when feminism has been only up, that is just actually... Um, you know, that has taken our rights away and also has, you know, has made our change our habits and all of that stuff. Um, it's been fascinating as well how a lot of them actually do work like agonions where they really, they, they, they decide yeah. for certain relationship situations. And what's fascinating and what I think is the main difference between us and them as such is precisely that question of empathy, right? Even when we talk about 
men that have probably gone the wrong way or there's like you know issues men around the wrong way no but you know like issues around misogyny and or consent with the with the, with, with these men even you know we always try to approach it from a sense of empathy and trying to understand like what yeah. happened there and and, and hope they're redeemable and can be exactly led back to the path of righteousness. Yeah, yeah, and what strikes me about these YouTube channels is that there is just not at all an attempt to understand the other side. It is very much creating a, like, uh, an, um, an us versus them sort of yes. uh, mentality, right? That there is, yeah, that there's a fundamental difference between the two as such. And obviously we, we also talk, you know, that men are stronger and obviously there is such thing from mis- as misogyny. We also understand that, of course, there are differences as such, but there's not like an attempt to basically uh, I guess decipher relationship problems from a point of empathy. It's always from the place that women is the wicked person that is trying to gaslight. Yes, yes. everything women are, are doing is multi levered and designed to like undermine you or trip you up or trick you into doing something that's against your better interests. Like women are fundamentally against your interests. Yeah. And therefore, you have to then learn strategies via these YouTubers to regain your self worth and your self control and your sense of self by combating the woman who is trying to undermine you. Like, yeah, it's very adversarial. And yet it is often advice aimed at men who are in relationships with women, which is fascinating. Yes, because as, as we say, this sort of completely destroys the, the, the assumption that uh, there's the, the, the lonely man that has never probably never had a girlfriend, you know, and it's just like, is so lonely and is turning towards misogyny. No, these are people in often happy relationships, happy long-term relationships that are still somehow seduced by this. Yeah. I think and that's, that's scarier in a sense because absolutely. there are actual women in their lives who could be very, very seriously affected by this, like the person who submitted this question, thank you so much. Like, it concerns me that someone is, is absorbing this rhetoric and is in a position where they have a partner who is emotionally intertwined with them. That's much actually scarier than the inner so alone in their bedroom in many ways. Uh, yes, and yeah, the experience manipulation through these, uh, you know, through the, I mean, again, I guess this would be the sort of language that they would say, we're, that that's the sort of thing we're doing, but... I but we would know. never say, like, for example, he's, she says, I'm assuming so she, he's saying stuff like, like, take women's rights away. We would never suggest take men's rights away. Yeah. Like, no. We, I, I don't, I don't think it's comparable, except that we're both trying to give advice to the same men. Yeah. Um, yeah, this, this fundamental kind of, um... I guess, yeah, again, assumption that women do this and men do this and that there is no, yeah, that there, that this, there's are such binaries and that there is no, I guess, attempt of understanding the, the, the differences and the traumas that people come go through as well. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the time, the way that people, uh, the way that people act in relationships really are more to do with their, with their trauma in the past rather than with you know their gender as such I mean obviously no of course I mean, yeah, gender comes of after course that. patriarchy exists like we are not you know we're, we're not denying that at all but it's just yeah it seems yeah that there's this that fundamental um, uh, divide and it ends up with relationships being about competing over who can like beat the other one at this yeah. wily game they're a part of rather than trying to create like a fruitful union of some kind like oh the woman's trying to achieve this so we must instead try and do like yeah it, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we don't need to tell you that relationships shouldn't be competitive and it shouldn't be about trying to trick each other and win over each other. And, I mean, obviously if he's saying rhetoric like women shouldn't have rights and I'm assuming you just don't agree with that full stop because obviously that's nonsense. Yeah. Then is he trying to provoke you into into fulfilling a certain discourse that he's already decided is what you're going to do because he's been watching your videos, do you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, exactly. So now sort of like we've kind of established uh, what these movements are about. We, I guess, want to practically kind of zoom in as to what you could do in this situation that you're finding yourself in. First of all, this, yeah, again, I just, I can't even imagine how fucking heartbreaking that is, you know. Usually in our, our um, I guess we have it the other way around where we, Take up with the men that are just kind of like so so with their politics, and then we like improve it and they're like <laughs> legit feminists by the end yeah. of the month. Whereas Not to say that you have failed in any way, like, no, we're just in a way. bubble, like that, yeah, that's all of it. And like, we are just, I guess, I don't know, we're like very particularly, I don't know, picky like that, which is, yeah. which also just really makes our pool small. And yeah, I don't know, it's bullshit. Yeah, I mean, I actually admire people that 
bother to invest in someone that isn't already a self defeating feminist because that's actually Absolutely. doing the work of feminism much Absolutely. better than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we like we tweak things around the edges, but like to 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 completely turn person around. That's yeah. that's huge, right? Um, so okay, so now uh, in terms of you know what should you do? This is this is your situation. I think so. Yeah. So there are two things, two ways we can uh, approach this, right? Have a conversation, and or like or 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 break up, right? So we'll park break up for a little bit. I think because it's just like yeah, you can. That's actually very very legitimate reasons why you fucking would. There's a lack of attention. There is there is you know a clear uh, misunderstanding of your interests. What if you guys want to have children together? You know, like you wouldn't want your child be growing up in this environment. And I would just, I mean, that line that you gave us as an example is a highly misogynistic line that I don't, I would never ever encourage any woman to date a misogynistic man. And maybe yeah. that line was a one thing, which is why we should talk about the talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um. And it was, it was I'm sorry, I just was doing some research on one of those videos, you know, and you know, they kind of where I'm picking the situation where a woman comes back home from uh, from work and then the guy is like just sat there playing video games and she asks him to tidy up, but like the way that the guy twists this goes like, you know, he makes her like get a bath for her to just like relax. Yeah. But oh, then he must he, be having a bad day. Yeah, yeah, literally. And then he goes like May I will take the the ingredients out of the fridge and I'll turn the you know I will turn the hob on so that after you come out of the bath you can cook the dinner and then you know basically it was like but like without like with zero irony yeah they, they are they are giving us legitimate advice on how to deal with your relationship issues <laughs> yeah 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 I mean again it's, it's fascinating so actually one of the things I would recommend first I mean obviously we don't know if you're still in a situation or not is like maybe watch these videos yourself and see what kind of like message they're giving him because the videos are very clever they're framed as if it's a reasonable thing like yeah your woman says this but you want to help understand what your woman really means yeah and so we're helping you understand what your you know these mysterious she clearly features. has issues you know mm. but you have to tolerate her because you you know you still want to like be with yeah, her yeah and like you, you know, want to like, her day. Day. exactly yeah. yeah yeah so these are the ways to kind of shut her like shut her up for a moment yeah you know, but like. it's dealt as like you know one bro to the other like down the pile like, oh like women right like, yeah 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 I mean it's fascinating but yeah 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 so and then I was thinking as well like between so we'll arrive right to the point is, I guess, of what are you going to say? But even in terms of the form, I'm thinking, for instance, if I were to be in the situation, I'd be interested in writing... Okay. I'd be interested in writing a letter, actually. I think, because I think that, in a way, would, would you know, put my, my, my thoughts very, very clearly, as well as maybe you can put the little links about, like, oh, yeah, I'm worried about this messaging and this and that, you know? And also, it won't, like, throw you off, and it won't give an opportunity for them to just, like argue with you or what not, but basically, yeah, writing whether that's an email or written letter, just with your concerns, and again, be like, hey, this is not a person I've been in love with, I, um, I also, I just think, you do need to see me as an equal, because if you don't, then, again, this is not gonna work, and, um, yeah, there just seems to have been a shift where you don't see me as a human, and that's a worry, and basically, I just want to get to the bottom of this, so I think some sort of intervention definitely has to happen. I think one of the things that you need to figure out if you don't already know, I'm presuming you know to some extent, is what what were and what are currently his views completely external to anything else? What, what are his feminist politics? How does he view you? How does he view your relationship? Yeah. How does he see it progressing over the next 5, 10, 20 years? Like, how does he see the division of labour in the household? And, and those kind of things. You need to find out where he's coming from. Even if it's influenced by these videos and stuff, before yeah, yeah, you can yeah. then be like, okay, well, see, you think this, but actually, I would prefer if it was like this, like, because... What does he think about different types of women as well? Yeah, you know? are women all this one thing? Who yeah, all have yeah, the same, yeah. like, evil way of... Or maybe the, you know, the little, the little hot bodies or whatnot, like, maybe they, they, they're... They, they see, this, this, this person see them as, like, ideal, the ones that are just, like, quiet and just, like, cook and, like, manage to be hot at the same time. I mean, anyways, yeah. it's... Just, and what you want from, what you want from a relationship, not just with him, but in general, and making sure that the things that you need from a relationship are being fulfilled. Yeah. Like. And as many, or, uh, I guess I'm jumping to the next stage now, but like as many people that have like been radicalized and gone the wrong way, there are just as many people that have been kind of liberals or whatnot, but actually there's this new generation of awesome feminists. Yes. Men. It is possible. Like, it's harder, and because it's against what they've been told is in their interests, but it is... 
Yeah, it is yeah. totally possible to turn people towards feminism. Well, that, but but even finding basically, there's now a bigger pool of cooler men. Oh yeah, yeah, you could yeah. you could find you could literally just dump <laughs> him and like get an awesome dude like immediately. I mean, this is the thing because I'm torn, right? Because half of our thing is wanting to help Improve. these men, yes. but uh, my other half is like I don't want to encourage women to stay in toxic situations. No. Like absolutely not. Yeah, so, but I mean, I, I don't know. I think you're right. Like even the fact that I'm sorry to be meta about this, and we don't want you to guys like. S- Thinking that you are writing to us means there's an issue, but like the fact that you are entrusting this to us does imply that this is kind of serious by now, you know, and um, you're not happy. Like, even if you're not happy on a low level, like you're mildly concerned. It reminds me a little bit of like this. So there's this Twitter um, account that's actually um, posts from Reddit, which is, I think, relationships.txt, and there was one two days ago, I think, basically, where a lady was uh, complaining about the fact that her partner, all he does is spends time on communist and anarchist Facebook uh, meme pages, creating the memes, and then looking how they perform, but basically he's on the phone, like, uh, the whole time, like, she can't even get a conversation with them. And the comments below were like, oh my god, bring it my way, oh my days, w- uh, way to brag about your boyfriend. Anyways, the whole thing was like, oh, so he's like, he does communist out of his mm. tweets, oh, what a fucking hot babe. Basically, everyone was like, send him my way, and all of that stuff. You know, and it, uh, that, w- literally everyone, literally everyone. And that was absolute. that was so heartbreaking, because you know, it really doesn't matter the politics of the person. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like, even take away completely the, the misogynist shit that your partner is watching or whatnot. Um, if they're just watching too much YouTube, yeah. or if they're just, like, if not, they're not given, attentive. If they're not attentive, that's a perfectly okay. reasonable, re- reasonable, I don't know, yeah. issue to, 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 to bring up mm-hmm. and or to, to decide that you're unhappy in a relationship. Yeah. So really, we're not just preaching about this just being like, the sort of content that they're talk that 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 is being, I guess you, I don't know. Um, yeah, no, my watched, my boyfriend can be like the best fucking anarchist in London, but if he's spending all his time being a great anarchist, and not spending any time going down on me, he can do one. Absolutely, that's actually what I commented, being like, even if this person, like the, the I was like, so this person sounds like a clicktivist, you know, the the mm-hmm. memes person, but even if they were like an IRL anarcho hunk, if they're not being attentive to me, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And by the way, I don't know if mean sex, I was a flippant comment also like listening to me and wanting to spend time with me and taking my opinion seriously. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also course. going down on me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, again, like something really boring is just why I think pluses and minuses of the relationship, you know? I mean. And you mentioned talking to your friends. Definitely, if you trust your friends and like, I'm assuming they do for your friends, definitely talk to your friends about this. Like, it never hurts to get a second opinion. Even if they're different, that's like also really useful. Yeah. Like, I've been giving a good friend of mine advice recently, and he told me that his other friend gave him completely opposite advice, but it still mm-hmm. ended up helping, you know, because... And, yeah, like, we hope we can be those friends, in a sense. Like For sure. So, yeah, I mean, if it's salvageable, if it's possible to yank them out of this... I wonder, again, what is their, their relationship with their, you know, with their parents? Or, like, mm-hmm. hate to be a bit Freudian about this, but with their mum, you know, has there been, has there been perhaps misogyny in the house that maybe they were, like, I don't know... A rebelling against for a while. Maybe they met you and they were happy with you for a while, but now it's all coming back. I and also, know, have they got new guy friends like IRL as well as like you know, what are their guy friends like? How do they interact? How do they talk about women? Like, is it just like a bit of loud bands that we can put yeah. aside, or is it like creating a community of animosity? Because there's a difference between occasionally, you know, like complaining about your girlfriend and having an animosity towards women, and yeah. And also be like, hey, so you know, look at. Look at the women of the past, would not. Would you like me to be that way? Would you like me to, I don't know, to be, to shut up and be just like a little server for you? Would that satisfy you? I mean, basically, there's just so many questions one could ask. I mean, yeah. Honestly, I would say dump him. Yeah. But, I mean, like, we've yes, said all this stuff because it's completely <laughs> up to you yeah. to, like, try and see what, like, we don't know what his good cause is. So you haven't given us, you know, a full picture of this person. Like, maybe he's maybe actually really attentive. Give the best head off of that. Yeah, on your maybe life. he could get the mind blowing <laughs> orgasms. And then maybe he said this woman thing as a joke. Like, we can't tell you those things. But these, these communities are toxic. And if he goes deeper into them, he will probably develop an increasing level of animosity towards women that will end up impacting your relationship and also 
do you want to be with someone who is nice to you if they hate women in general? Yeah, what about your friends, right? Or your yeah. mom, either. Or, or any other or your woman. sisters, yeah. Like, I'm skeptical if a guy, like, compliments me, but then, like, slut shames another woman yeah. or whatever. Like, you it, should, you deserve, yeah. basically, you deserve the best. You deserve the best. Yeah. And to think that you're not getting the best already fucking annoys me, so I just don't yeah. like this, I don't like that dude. So I'm, I would say, fuck yeah. Him. And, I mean, but separate from that, even even his friends should feel responsible for, like, making him feel, making him not feel bad, but be bad. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, he's clearly got an awesome girlfriend, like, he needs to be questioning why he's going down these alleys, like, where is he getting, I mean, you know, like, the, the YouTube algorithm wants us to become yeah. MRAs, but... And if he's got questions, I don't know, send him our way. Yeah, I was going to say, like, show him our videos, like, yeah. this is kind of the same, the kind of guy we want to be talking to as well. And I know the world is fucked up there. I know that, that you know it's it's tricky for all of us to find these intimate intimate moments and intimate relationships and like I don't know, if we always even explaining how difficult flirting is these days. I we understand that people mm -hmm. can feel alienated and lonely and And that these communities can seem like a haven of guys who are finally talking to each other because a lot of men even on the left they're like feminists left That's true. do not be are not open with their emotions, do not talk about their concerns and their fears and this community Unfortunately, has tapped right into that. So of course, it's a, it's a community. Right? Yeah, it is a yeah. community. And we as the left are shit at providing communal yeah. communities or communal experiences. So we totally understand yeah. the lure. And the reason, like the reasons he might be going into this, could be completely legitimate reasons of feeling like he needs to talk to some guys about his feelings. And yeah. and I'm, yeah, there are better outlets. I wish we could list them. Come to Clapton Games, man. Clapton <laughs> Games. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. There's some cool feminist dudes there that are also like, you know, supportive of each other, I think. So yeah, it doesn't have to be, they don't have to be supported by you or us. You know? And it doesn't have to be like girly things. Like we go to football every Saturday and we like drink oh, and cool like, girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean? Like it, you don't have to be like a, a feminine guy to be a feminist. Yeah. Like you can if you want to be, but it's not, it's not what people think it is. No, no. So for your sake, I would say don't be with this person because that's scary, but it's but, completely up to you. Yeah, and like, I, I would recommend maybe writing a letter as to why you left. I think it's good for this person to know. Also, be aware, they might share it online. Yeah. If they've already gone the really terrible path, like... Yeah, I don't know how strong the path it is. Because he hasn't yeah. just started watching the last month, so that doesn't mean he might be redeemable. But then they, yeah, they did also say, like, he's a changed person. Like, yeah. Yeah, I really feel for your position yes. because seeing someone you love change is horrifying like. and thank you so much again yeah you know messaging about this oh you know I, I know examples of yeah men that definitely were on the wrong side of history but then they you know what no i'm not gonna finish the sentence i was gonna say like oh you know there are some misogynists but then they met a girlfriend and then they actually became feminist it shouldn't be a woman's job yeah. to fucking teach the dude about fucking feminism except so, no. that like there really aren't any like men led feminist groups because and that's a real failing of the left to be honest is that like men talking about their emotions in a non-toxic way pretty much doesn't exist or when they do try they get banned from the scene eh? oh yeah i heard that happen <laughs> so yeah we yeah we understand that there is a reason why people go to this these groups it isn't just i hate women full stop but it's just it can lead to that very fucking quickly and that's scary yeah, that's well, well, again, please be in touch with us about how it's going, you mm -hmm. know, we're always there. Um, and yeah, as, as Ron said, we're, we're sorry that if this was time sensitive. Basically, we just didn't have enough questions to like warrant a show, and anyway, this is what it is. But yeah, please do get back in touch with us, because we are very, very curious about this kind of thing, and like, which is, this, this is the point of our project, this yes. scenario. And if you have any follow-up questions, or even just like an update about what's going, yeah. definitely want to hear from yeah, you. Yeah, 100%, please. And good luck, and yeah. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. <sighs> All right, I'll All right. just give it a check that everything's going mm -hmm. well. Move on to the next one. I uh, might make this a good one. Yeah, well, of course. Because that's just what's happening. Okay, the next one's easy peasy. How are we doing? We're we're good. Any viewers? Um, six. Come on, guys. Wow. Yeah. I thought this was an interesting topic as well. Yeah. I guess they, <laughs> you're the, the sex sessions are coming now. Yeah. <laughs> Very so, much. <laughs> next up on the sex part oh is, hey guys, quick question: How important is using condoms or dental dams during oral sex? 
Uh, we don't want this to just be a sex show because that's fucking boring. Thank you again for the question. I don't know anything about this. Yours protection. Okay. That's all. Look, do you want what the NHS would say or do you want what I would say? <laughs> well, both. It's the same okay. thing we're driving, right? There's the driving instructor lessons and then there's real life. Yeah, there's my dad being like, fuck it. So, look, it depends on the... Uh, I anatomy like of the, the Okay, so a dam is it's a kind of basically it's like a it's like a kind of you know like a poly like plastic foil. Yeah. Is it called polyester? Is that what it's called? Po- plastic foil that you use for what the fuck is that uh, called? Cling film. Cling film. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a cling film disc that you like put here. Yeah. So that you like can lick through it uh-huh. without having to make direct contact. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, look, most STDs, which I'm assuming what we're talking about, aren't transmitted, like, herpes you can always get. Herpes you will get from going down to someone, for sure. Like, (laughs) you're not going to get herpes. Which is fine, it's also not a big deal, by the way. Like, I mean, oh, whatever. Like, yes, you should, yes. If you want to be 100% protected against... STDs, STIs, you should be using these things. I have never once in my entire fucking life used a dental dam. Wait. <laughs> Neither is Marianne because she didn't even know what a dental dam was. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that boring straight girl. But, I mean, condoms make, okay, it's basically like excretional fluids, like some women excrete a lot of, uh, women, uh, sorry, people with vaginas like excrete a lot of fluids and it's less common a penis excretes like you know there is like literal cum and when we can't do with like a I still object. think that I always think like sperm. I'm not gonna giggle anymore I still think sperm sperm and sperm contains god I really like this, I don't know enough about anything but sperm sperm can contain <laughs> FTT well, so yeah. I would recommend with a partner you don't no, not to sort all of their cum. But also, you know. We've done we've it. We've done it. Yeah. Like, I I hate the taste of condoms. I'm not into tasting condoms. Nobody's into having their dick sucked with a condom. Is on. this just for, about oral sex? Yeah, just for oral. Oh, okay. So, you know, like, talk to your partner about it. If they want to use them, 100% use them. Yeah, basically, we're hoping this is not coming from like a point of like you being like, oh, I have this feminist show, and then they were like, yeah, yeah man, like it's fine. No, if someone is insisting, you fucking go with it. Yes, hundred percent. You always use any kind of protection that the other person wants. Yeah, and also yourself. Do not feel like you're being silly if you want the other person to use a dental dam because no, that's also legit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah. Look, we're we're not. We're not, I mean, we said we were the NHS. We're not the NHS. <laughs> that was a lie. <laughs> like, as I was saying that, I was like, fuck, we were called the NHS. I completely forgot we were called the NHS. But, um, yeah, like, yeah, like, fucking hell. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Read the, I mean, I don't know. This is yeah, so subjective, NHS honestly. Website yeah. and decide. Keep some condoms on you at all times if you're someone who has a penis. Yes. Also, if you're not, just because it's handy. Yes. And if the partner you're with is like, use a condom, use a fucking yeah. condom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we would be lying if we said that we haven't, like, gone no. the, the, the... And you can also, by the way, if you don't have a dental dam, use a condom as a dental dam by just cutting it up the edge and then you just, like... Practical? Yeah. Yeah, I use them for rimming. For what? Rimming. When you lick an asshole. I didn't know that. Don't think I'm I'm just. No, I'm kidding. I wasn't like no, sex shaming no. you. No, 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 no. Like I'm just. I'm a bit embarrassed. That I don't know the lingo. Yeah, that's the lingo. Rimming. Rimming. It's like the rim. Oh like yeah. Rimming. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had a partner that wanted to use them while rimming, which is fair enough. No, that's absolutely fair enough. Also, there's different issues that I mean, you're yeah, saying oral. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming you just mean like front genitals, but maybe you also mean back genitals. Yeah. So like, yeah. People may have insecurities around that stuff, all of that. Yeah, yeah, like legit, all kinds of reasons. Yeah. So. And don't feel like offended or like ashamed if your partner wants to use them either. It's nothing on you. It's just a thing. Like if nobody wants to get an STI. It's long. I was. I want to grab, but like, I'm like, I want first two pops. I actually, I don't want it anymore. Me. Yeah. All right. Well, we got we got three more views just for that one. <laughs> so but I'm sorry. Like, quick. Also, if any 
I don't know, if any um, people with actual information want to let us know. <laughs> no, 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 if any, um, I don't know, uh, ethical condom production uh, firms want to sponsor us, then yeah, yeah wear yeah. them, wear them. <laughs> yeah, we would definitely be sponsored by like Eco Condom Brigade. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Goals. Mm-hmm. All right, kids, next one. Oh, God, okay, we're going, we're freaking pacing through them. Well, this one's like, what does that say? And I think there are better ones out there. Well, no, sorry, no, 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 it's not better. No, no, no. But like, yes, no, one, no, this, yes like, no. this is a binary this question. This is a binary yeah, question. Yeah. Which we still manage to, like, be like, well, it depends <laughs> on the situation. <laughs> okay. 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 Hey, weird question. But I guess this is where they're supposed to go. Well, this is so where they're supposed to go. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a cis het man and I shaved my body a while ago and found that until it mostly grew back, I felt like I was a raw fish lying on ice in a fishmonger's. To what extent is having an unshaven body unattractive to women, as far as you can say? If it means anything, body hair in women is totally not an issue for me at all. I got so annoyed when I got this question. I got annoyed with that last line, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, wait, why? Because I find it like... Okay, uh, imagine you're on a date with someone and they say, don't worry, being a feminist doesn't bother me at all. Is, I don't think that's what was being I know it wasn't meant to, I know you were trying to imply that you were like a super cool guy that like, but it shouldn't be something that people have to say that women's body hair is okay. Well, like, yeah, but we still live in the world I know we where... live in the world, but it just, I know, but it just annoys me that that is like a, a good guy point and this is not a critique on you, it's a critique on society that makes that a good guy point because it should yeah. be fucking, Obvious. yeah, yeah, I, like, I don't, like, I don't need your, not your, but your permission to have body. Do you know what I, I mean? I had a person not, 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 not go there because of hair. Oh, as did I. Yeah. Fascinating. Uh, fucking bullshit it is, is what it is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> and it's so, it's really, it really hurts. It mm. really hurts. I mean, it's their loss, but. It's totally their fucking yeah. loss. Yeah. I mean, if you want to literally go there and like shave me, fine. Yeah. Do it. Right? You do the labor, not me. You yeah. know how hard it is with the, like, the whole fucking angle situation? It's bull. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I guess you would know because you tried it. Alright, so the reason why it annoyed me, this question, but like, it's, it's not that annoying. I was just like, because I love a hairy body. It's absolutely my preferred. And it, it kills me to think that there are some women out there that like, insist of, of like, hairy, for, for hairlessness. Okay, see, I also like, Every guy I've ever, pr- yeah, every guy I've ever hooked up with, mm, not one, have been hairy, and it's been like, whatever, like cool. I'm down with it. I like it. I like doing this on someone's chest and having like it caught in my fingers. It's nice. But I don't, I don't think it's wrong with having a preference. Okay, and that's I don't think it's wrong. No, I don't think it's wrong with having a preference. I don't think it's wrong in like asking your partner to fulfill your preference. I think it's wrong in demanding that your partner fulfill your preference. No, but no one's like the man. Like if my boyfriend like, was like, hey, I wish you shaved your pussy, I'd be like, oh, that's nice, dear, make your cup of tea. And not shave my pussy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah guess like, so what? So basically you think for a lady that wants for that to happen for a dude, she, would, she should shave him. I think she could ask if he was up for it. And if he said no, then fucking fine. But you said, well, but, but that's, that's the thing. Like, she should p- physically do it herself. Well, yeah, yeah sure, the, way that, the way that we are saying is yeah. that like, yeah, if you don't like it, fucking get it off of yeah. me, then fine, I don't care. But like, I think that is the only way I would... But then again, this doesn't sound like the person felt comfortable without the hair at all. Well, this is the thing, and you clearly don't want to be hairless, in which case don't be fucking hairless, and... I don't, like, I don't know any women that demand... Do, like, you... Wait, look at... Um, and yeah, yeah, I mean, I said something bad. So, like, porn stars or whatever? No, well, that, but, but in general, like, I mean... We come from a scene, right? Where, mm-hmm. And we're still a very niche scene, yeah. right? These are, sort of things are okay. You look at the you know, GQ magazine, all of the bodies mm-hmm. or whatnot, like... Only recently the whole bear thing is becoming a bit more... Also, the gay more. male scene is very, very um, pressuring you to shave. Yeah, right? yeah. Quite a, well, unless like, you're a bear, right? right? But unless bear is normal! Bad. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the thing. So the pressure is there. It's huge. And I completely understand. And I think, yeah, their entire... Like, look at all the reality shows, right? Like, I know Love Island, all of what, mm. all of what not. Do you ever see a hair on a, on a, on a man's body? Never. I, 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 I find that... Sh- I find that absolutely... I don't know, that's yeah. to me that's unattractive. So I get where the, yeah, we get where the, uh, the pressure is coming from. I'm curious as to whether you shaved because someone asked you to, or just because you were kind of like, felt like it? When I say unattractive, like if someone is naturally not mm. that hairy, like that's absolutely mm-hmm. fine. It's mm-hmm. just more of a like, the, 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 the pretend attempt. But I, I also have this kind of, possibly like, mm, 
sexist a sexist view that like I'm not turned on by guys that spend more time on their aesthetic than me. Like if if he takes longer to get ready in the morning than me, that's like an issue for me. Which is like me like possibly buying into like a kind of like definitely. macho thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it's a thing. And so like the idea that like I have to sit waiting around for my boyfriend to like shave his back is just like long as fuck. I like So because they like it for themselves or why? If they like it for them ah, yeah, kind of both, yeah. And like I said, it's a bit sexist, like Yeah. I just I'm into people being get up and go. I'm I'm an anti faffer of like a rule. Like I don't know. I like people like I don't know, I don't know. I go to fucking tanning beds that no one's talk about like I know, <laughs> that's why I'm, that's that's why I'm like being definitely not being like PC on this. Is that like it's fine for me to take like half an hour of makeup, but it's not fine for you to take half an hour shaving your back. But that's also nonsense and if I was dating that someone and loved someone yeah. who was wanted to shave the back, I obviously wouldn't care. Yeah. But I just yeah. mean for me personally, the act of shaving implies a kind of level of Mm, I don't know. Yeah, not no. no Cleaning I that I'm not, or I'm not attracted to personally. But it's the same with like choosing clothes or whatnot. And yeah, no, I think that that is double standard then. Like, yeah, it's no, it, it, I, I'm owning that. Yeah, like, that's it is subjective. Double standard. It's like, subjective. Like, yeah. But I'm just like, yeah, that's my personal thing. But also, yeah, do. What about what about lifting, for instance, right? Yeah, see, I'm not into that. Oh, I love that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess like I'm the. I don't know. So it's weird because I like we're stereotypical in different ways. Yeah. Like, as in, like I'm stereotypical in terms of like I like them putting an effort, and I'm like, you're stereotypical because like I'm you're like. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, we're being absolutely fucking rubbish here. <laughs> no, but like That's obviously, it. do what the fuck you want to do with your body, and if a girl likes you, she'd really. I mean, I've never cared at all. Like even if someone's like shaved like their, their crotch, and I'm not really into that, I don't like my face. I'm still like yeah. I like that. I'm still gonna like suck that dick, you know? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would definitely not do it for me if you feel like a fish. Absolutely. Don't do anything if you feel like a fish, unless you have a fish fetish, in which case, do everything you can to feel like a fish. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. Because, I yeah, I think, I, I think naturally I prefer the, 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 the hairiness. Mm. To me, like, it hurts to think that someone would, like, on purpose try to get rid of it, even if they don't feel... Like, especially if they don't feel comf- yes. comfortable sans hair as such. Like, if you don't care either way and your partner wants you to do, then there's no harm, I think. Like... Yeah, yeah. I don't ever feel yeah. pressured. Uh, if someone is uh, insisting, then like, it, I think again, there's a difference between you not caring and 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 also asking them to do it. For instance, okay, so I fucking fuck it. I'll be real. Mm-hmm. So yeah, as I said, I've been like told off for my hairiness down there as such, um, and and then I did put an effort for a wee bit and. I would just get chronic cystitis. Well, I just get the fucking disgusting rash that makes me look like a like freshly peeled chicken. And you like, see, it's fucking long. Like yeah. I don't understand how these, yeah, how the people in in yeah, how the how the how the porn stars manage to have it. Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess it's proper they professional. Work, right? Like I just yeah. shave myself like in the shower without my glasses on. Like yeah, I have never shaved. I trimmed, and even yeah. then, like it's just like yeah, chronic cystitis. Like that. That's it. Like there is a reason why it's fucking protective. I guess I yeah. know. So. So yeah, so I would even be like, for mes- medicinal reasons, I'd be like, I can't, I can't do this, you know, it's just absolutely your length. But also, it's not like you're talking about your whole body, not just your crotch, right? Like, your back, or your chest, or your legs, I don't know. It just seems like so much effort, man. Like, I'd literally be like, girl, grow up, man. Yeah. Like, grow up, people have hair. Literally get over it. Sorry. Yeah. And if, like, if they're not into you because of your body hair, then, like, fuck, fuck them. them. Fuck them. Like, I, yeah, I used to date someone that, like, didn't want to go down with me because I had her that, like, there was no way now I would accept that. No way in hell. I would, like, sooner break up with someone, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I literally, I straight away, I was like, okay, absolutely, you pack your shit and go now. Yeah. Now. Now. Like, yeah. And needless to say, they apologized for two hours and went down on me. Yeah, because it turns out, you know what, a lot of people just want to get laid more than they care about the thing they pretend they care about, like... Yeah. It's... Yeah. And it was nice, actually, one time I went out with someone, so that was my, like, the, the fuck the Tory story, someone, like, really right-wing, um, absolutely stereotypically always only dates models, all of that stuff, and, you know, I was like, mate, I'm pretty hairy, it's gonna be a thing. And he was very gallant and lovely about it, and it was kind of, I think, I had a really good experience, so... I had, I had a very similar story to that when I was in Vienna, um... I bumped into this random guy and we got talking in this bar and then we were like making out and stuff and I was like, okay, I, I feel like this is a random dude, he's not part of the feminist scene, I should like content know what's going to happen. So I was like, by the way, I just think you should know that I'm the hairiest girl you'll ever have slept with. And he was like, and I was like, mm-hmm. and I was waiting, I was just waiting for him to say something. He went like, oh, wow. And I was like, I knew it. 
I knew it. And he said, like, no, no, no. I just mean, oh, wow, we're going to have sex tonight. <laughs> and it was like the best way of being proved wrong ever. <laughs> like, yeah, that's cool. And needless to say, we had sex and it was great. But yeah. Yeah. It's also fucking, it is a class issue. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. like fucking, I don't know, having the time or the money to do all of that stuff. Because there is definitely a difference in tools. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, lady razors are super expensive. Yeah, absolutely. Like, overpriced, though. Mm-hmm. And I get mine on eBay, so I get them, like, twice cheaper and still it fucking burns, like, yeah. burns a hole in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so, and then laser, which is, I guess, is least bath, is, like, well expensive. And then, but yeah, but then the worst quality uh, razors that's, uh, that are cheaper will, you know, sometimes yeah. re- leave you with, like, bad... I know pain or whatnot. Anyways, so so yeah, it's also an insistence of a certain of a certain lifestyle that not everyone can afford, not everyone has the time for, and yeah, call that shit out. Yeah, yeah sure. definitely. Yeah, like I am. I, I actually really agree with what you're saying. Is that in a way, it's really even fucking sad and disappointing to receive these sort of questions, where it's just like, man, it's 2019. Like, yeah. People have fucking hair, and some people. Again, for absolutely fine reasons, like they don't, they don't like it. For instance, I don't like my legs hairy. I don't know. See, I don't really care, but like it depends on the outfit. Like if I'm wearing a skirt, I want to have like, like shaved legs. Like if I'm like wearing lipstick and stuff, and if I'm not, if I'm going for like more of a butch thing, I don't like. I is this it's whole aesthetic? But it's this whole thing as well. Like there was a period in my life in this fucking London left where like. I felt like I'm not good enough. Oh, I'm not pressured into not shaving. Exactly, yeah. I'm not good enough feminist if I if I shave, yeah. right? Like yeah. if I am, yeah. If I'm like if my armpits are shaved or my legs mm-hmm. are shaved, then like what the fuck? But like, mate, like good for you. I'm sorry, this is not at you at all. But like, there are all of the women that have been I don't know implying that to me, or people are just like. I know platinum and then blonde, where it takes them maybe like two weeks to grow one milli- yeah. millimeter of invisible hair. <coughs> hey, like I shave in the morning, in the afternoon I already have like two millimeter stubble. So yeah. like, yeah, this is a lot more work, and it's fucking visible, and it's that, and it's just like, yeah. Anyways, yeah, I yeah I remember going like on this trip where we all no, none of us shaved our legs, obviously, because like you know we're all squatters. <laughs> And yeah, like the first time I was with had like blonde invisible hair on like golden tan legs and I was like pasty Rowan with like a fucking bush growing. And I was like, I'm not even tanning through this. That was the first reason I started shaving my legs. Was like completely, definitely superficial reason, but on a different level is that I wasn't tanning because of my leg hair. And so I shaved so I could tan. Which yeah. is like... Yeah, and then all these people have literally like invisible blonde hair yeah. and like fucking... Yeah, and then you're... So, so yeah, think. like if there's so many the politics of hair is still to this day very fascinating. As as yeah. sad as it is that it's yeah, still it shouldn't a conversation, be. it shouldn't be. But basically, nah, hair is fucking great, and fuck anyone. Yeah, 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 right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I knew I was eventually gonna say that at some point. I'm I'm joking. I am joking. Keep it profesh. Keep it profesh. I may have slightly. No, I'm not gonna go there. I was gonna say that I may have a wee crush on my driving instructor. <laughs> he doesn't know it, I'm being pro- purely professional. Did he hear? I wouldn't know. Hmm. No, I wouldn't know. Wow. So, I <laughs> found the first. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm surprised people... Uh, anyways, yeah. yeah no, no, no. It's, it's all good, it's all good. Alright, all next, right. on the uh, agenda. Uh, oh, okay, this is the, the sex one. The sex one, they're all the sex ones. But the, the sexiest sex one. No, not sexiest. 50 but... viewers! Ooh, hello. Ooh, damn, hello, son. Hello, stranger. <laughs> okay. Prep. No, prepare, basically. All the viewers. Oh. No, no, as I, I don't know. Prep. <laughs> okay. I'm a 20 year old cis het man from Aberdeen, and I've never had a romantic or sexual relationship. I think it's interesting to hear women talk about what they find attractive and sexually satisfying. Because when I'm in the right sort of place personally for a relationship, I'd like to be able to do it uh-huh, thoroughly. And because the uh-huh was in there. And because I often find accounts of what works surprising. E.g., I hadn't been under the impression that doing things to breasts, backs, ears, etc. would do much for the people involved. I get that a lot of what would work for women must be highly specific to individuals, but could you try and cover the essentials if that's possible? What a lovely fucking question, again. You absolute babe. Like, you're 20 years old and you're interested in such questions. Yeah, because you think you're, yeah, because you think you're lacking expertise. You know that, like, 99% of people, well, like, men, dudes, I don't know, or people, to be fair, fucking yeah. people, don't do that. They don't do that. They're not interested in how, pleasing, how to please other people. They only want to please themselves, all of that stuff. So you absolute fucking babe, like, thank you. Yeah, and also, like, it... 
it, it seemed like from your list of things that you were surprised at, like breasts and ears and stuff that like, I don't know, either you've watched our show or you've recently talked yeah, to some women yeah, or something yeah. that have made you, made you surprised in a really good way that, yeah, it's not just all about, all about the dick, like, which is really or cool. Or pussy or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, why? Should we? By the way, is my makeup looking okay? Yes. Which yeah. dress? Yes. Perfection. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, first of all, oh. watch our videos, uh, breast, breast tips, boobs, a handful of considerations. I think this applies a bit basic that's because what, I think we spoke about... I think so too. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, but... Yes. Okay. Let's do this. The essentials. The essentials. Right. So, I think we've already covered, you know, how do you even get, you know, how do you get a hookup, all of that stuff, even if you're going Tinder away, good pictures, always invest in those, you know, sorry, it's just a thing. Anyways, but then you're there, you're there. Yeah, you're in the bedroom. You're now in the bedroom, it's all gonna happen. Take your socks off first. Yeah? No, do you like to make it matter socks? Not socks, but I will say something to be said about, but maybe that's really just one left, for like a certain amount of clothes still on, something, something. Mm. Maybe yeah, either. Don't. Also, okay, one of my pet peeves is when I've worn like really nice underwear, like matching bra and pants, which I do very fucking rarely because I hardly ever wear bras, and the person I'm with just like rips off all my clothes at once, and I'm like, bitch, I like, they <laughs> have like a, <laughs> yeah, I just sometimes I'm like, stop, stop, and I like, like, take my top off, I take my trousers off, but leave my underwear on because, ta da! <laughs> So, again, I think this is, again, this is one of the reasons why we do the show together is because we have very, very different things. Mm. So a lot of the time what we'll be talking about right now will probably be very, yes. very uh, different for us. So, yeah, I'll put in, be putting my cards on the table quickly and I think something that I've already mentioned in different shows. To me, certainly, 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 aerogenic uh, zones, I think, I believe that's how they're called, is... Erogenous. It, erogenous. Mm. Is uh, lower back. Crazy about that. Uh... Ears, but only if it's not wet. So no tongue in the ear. No tongue in the ear. Hmm. No. But like biting. Yeah, but basically as long as it's not wet, mm. and definitely like fine with like uh, fingers, all of that stuff. Uh, God, this is bad. This is. Do you feel? I'm literally, but yeah, like I'm, I'm kind of just touching all of this. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, neck, and I think neck really is, is so. With neck, you need to be careful, right? Because some people are really not, not, uh, not okay with being uh, uh, choked. Mm. And that's absolutely. I, I, I think for me, I check have before to be, you choke. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So it can be a triggering, not in a good sense. Uh, um, I guess space for for a person. So you should definitely, uh, yeah, look into that. And then nipples, crazy about nipples. Yeah, yeah. Um, buttocks, 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 buttocks. Yeah. Really, like what? Everything. Really. Everything. Mm. Like everything. So I don't have that because, you know, I... So good foreplay, basically, mm. what we're trying to establish right yeah. now is that good foreplay is extremely important for whatever is going to happen later on, you know? Set up, you know, the, you know, whether that's moody lighting or whatnot, but... Um, but don't you, if it's like a fast hookup, don't go too cheesy. No, like, no, like, no. Like, no, loads of candles and, and like, roses. fucking dido no. in the background. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but like a certain touch. Oh, it's a certain certain Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Uh, but even just the one candle will do, because that's enough lighting for just to see the silhouette. And right? very flattering lighting. Yes. And honestly, I don't know. Like, if you're like straight up into it, that's fantastic, and that's it. Like, you just get on with it. But something to be said about delaying, mm. right? Like, you know, when I first started watching porn back in the day, I used to watch massage porn because I really liked the idea of like the full body massage that then becomes sexual, and I found that very like erotic. The idea Absolutely. that like every part of their body is being touched yeah. and stroked, yes. and it gets increasingly towards the like the best the sex yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, get plastic sheets; they're quite cheap on eBay. Plastic sheets. So you put it uh, between your sheets and your mattress. But doesn't it make it sweaty? Why would you get plastic sheets? It's not, they're, they're somehow, plastic sheets. they're not plastic, they're somehow, they're somehow breathable, but they don't put the, they don't get the oil, basically, they don't get the oil yeah, on the right, mattress. Yeah, right, because my, like, lube is, like, it's just staining all my sheets, That's like, with it. oil patches, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this yeah, is yeah, expensive yeah. lube, and it's just ruining my sheets. <laughs> yeah, so, no, no, I think something that it, it goes through sheets and stuff, so water, okay, water-based lube, there's yeah. this, there's this one that's a bit pricey, but, uh, Durex, I think they released this really good water-based one that's, like, I think it says like organic aloe vera on it, whatever, I'm not really sure, but that one's like on point. Um, I mean, I'm sure to be fair, there's some better stuff out there. 
But yeah, like honestly, just insisting on being like, hey, I just kind of want to give you a massage is always, is always yeah. lovely. Like that will definitely, like there's no one that's literally going to be like, no. Nah. Well, unless you're already like fucking, that, that's yeah. just this way. But no, everyone loves a massage. A massage, I think I become erotic so easily. Like even when you don't want them to, like I've had many a, like, experience and when I got a massage from someone else I'm like inappropriately turned on it's the whole thing. Well you see I don't let anyone do it on me because precisely because Well I, I've only had like a massage by a professional twice and like both times I was like you're <laughs> so not my type and yeah I am like yeah. 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 Yeah, so that uh, that never. But obviously, again, the first day asking to massage someone can or cannot be. No, no, that's already when you're in the bedroom, I imagine. Yeah. Yes. Um, God, this is so. It's just like it's going so graphic so quickly. I feel like, but I mean, it's that question though. It is that sort of question. So yeah, essentials. So yeah, like good good amount of foreplay never never hurts, and yeah, be, being attentive, a lot a, a lot of lube. People like different types of uh, pressure as well. Like some people like like skimming motion, but other people like like cuts or, or like bites. It's that's very very subjective, and also different places, like and also different times in the experience. Whether like you like fingernails right down your back, or other times you might want like a feathery motion. Yeah, like, yeah. I would refrain from getting uh, a lot of toys straight away as such because so I have this whole thing where I don't like the aesthetics of the. All the fetishes that we have right now, basically the whole like leather latex thing, like that's I I don't I don't find it I, I don't find it attractive at all. Um, yeah, something to be said about a good good USB rechargeable sex toy, of course, something quite basic. But like I think that can be very scary for us straight away if you're just like introducing these things straight away. I I'm sorry, this no, is no, fine. No. Maybe you have a different opinion. No, I just have this. an anecdote about my first time with someone. Um, when I went back to their flat and they opened a box and showed me their like, Straight sex toy collection. Straight oh, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, you see that would freak me out. Uh, yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think there's a way to introduce that as well. As that. Yeah. yeah, there are ways to, to show that you're competent without having to show all these toys. But also, you know, if you're yeah. competent, you shouldn't have to use toys. Like, toys, are, toys should be an addition, oh, an yeah, addition, addition to sure. a sexual scenario, not a replacement for one. Like. Yeah. Um, yeah, so touch I think is very important and like, yeah, basically I, I think a lot of the time we see that people really imagine sex as just being like, I don't know, like French kissing and then like booby touching and like bum touching and then like, you know, like oh, 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 yeah. shitty sex. And also like booby just... touching and bum touching mean like a grab or like a yeah. pink, or, like, it's, like I don't want to feel my, my, my tits squeeze, that's what's painful. Like, yeah. Something like that, but I'm not into that, like it's more about like... It's, caressing yeah like, sensuality and and again yeah. this is very subjective i think so a lot of, totally a lot of people that i know that have well the one in particular that has like rejected me and that because i was i guess a bit too vanilla for him uh you know he was all about like i don't know fucking like quite violent stuff straight away as such but the thing is i think people who are like that tend to be quite vocal about it quite early on like with women in particular who are into like i into more like uh, what? Like it's not extreme, but like in risque, or risque or intense or like uh, potentially painful scenarios are generally more used to telling that because it's not a given, which is a good thing. It's not a given. Like yeah, when it comes to pain, I, I like a scalpel. There See, that's a random one. I would, you, oh, that. She would need to say that to me because I would not just like randomly bring out a scalpel in the bedroom. Do not bring out a scalpel in the This is really, yeah, do not do that. But yeah, that's the thing. That's like many years in, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, and also, like, one of the things that you can't. Okay, your first lay with someone is probably not going to be that great. Like, it can be, but it cannot be. But one of the nice things when you just have sex is to be lying in bed with that person, saying what you like, saying what you'd like more of saying like what you're into like trying and that can be a really, a really fun and playful discussion it's to be like oh i really liked it when you did this like maybe next time you can do this well like, i don't know it's a little like dirty that. talk i'm uh, again well, it's not dirty. Dirty. i find it quite innocent like it's a little bit to me of what you said earlier about the whole like um mm, can i can i do this or can i do mm. that you know a lot of the time i just i would prefer just sensual silence i don't know really oh actually okay but then again it's a different thing like i quite enjoy in like also in a not sexual or, scenario, like or with like sounds, not like, silence, like sounds like, you know, yeah. breathing and all that. But like, we for example have had chats about what we want to do in bed in a pub and stuff like that, like just like randomly. Yeah, like, that comes hard. up. Like, it's like, yeah, and it's not a thing and you get kind of excited, like, yeah. And so like, the first time doesn't have to be the time that you manage to tick all the boxes because you won't even if you try, unless you're like fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, if you do, then call me. But like... 
Yeah. But like, yeah, talking after you've had sex onto someone, it's often like, like if you want to continue both having sex with each other, like, it's a lot more chill, and you can be like, yeah, you know, I. Again, prolong it a, bit, a little bit, maybe perhaps some touch through the clothes mm. first, you know, or just like, just, I don't know, um, yeah. you know, maybe only exposing one particular bit, not taking yes. all of your clothes off straight away, yes. you know, but exposing just one particular bit yeah. um, from whichever of the ones that we've listed and like giving a lot of attention to that, you know, so basically a build up, build up, build up. Yeah. Um, oh, I just thought I lost it. Shit. Um, you know, but... Um, yeah, so really doesn't play to just... But yeah, again, as we said, like, a lot of the time, basically it takes a quite a special person for the first time to, to be good straight away. A lot of the time, first times are just, aren't just great, aren't that great. Um, mm. But if they are good, it is usually because because that has been, like, a prolonged... And also, don't get too drunk, first of all. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of the... Like, I can't come and I'm drunk full stop. Same, like, same, same, absolutely. I think similar for, mm. for people with penises as well. Like, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, well, like, they've been... Things have like I've dreamed about someone for months and months and months, and then like we eventually like, got to the point, and like we just wore off our faces, yeah. and then just like it was fucking terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Although yeah. you just, like dreamed about that person for so long. And, no, like, it's just a hot mess. Also, it's really hard not to do this because I'm also guilty of this, but don't necessarily assume that sex ends when the person with the penis has come. Oh yeah, like. There's still a lot more yeah. you can do and play around Need with. Say, and make them come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make them come. Well, but not also, it's not always obvious. But also, like, obvious. see if someone's satisfied because, like, often, like, I am kind of spent, like, <laughs> exhausted. I'm not that fit by the time the person with the penis has come. And so I'm normally actually like, that was nice. I'm ready to, like, leave off. But, like, yeah, there are other things you can do and, like, staying close with that person if they want that or, like, following their signals post-coital is also really important as well because like I've also been with people where like the second like the orgasm has happened like it's been like get up and leave and not like they haven't told me to but it's been that feeling of get up and leave put your clothes on and go which it can leave you feeling quite used yeah so like being a responsible person and having sex also is transcends the experience of having sex itself yeah. like if you want to be a good lover you have got to do the before and after care yeah set up you know good smells in the room set mm. up the temperature like not too hot and not too cold uh, and then also um i was thinking wait wait what sorry, I no 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 oh, i think i dropped it oh, i dropped my thought. okay well one of, the, one of the things that like uh, one of the people i've been with does or did do on a regular when i was with them that i think is a really good thing is that like after we'd hooked up they recommended that we got lunch the next day which even though it was at that time we were then together for several years but like even though it wasn't that time just to hook up, it makes you feel like, okay, this person doesn't want to just, like, pack up and leave my life, they want to have lunch with me. And even if that person says, ah, oh, I don't feel like it, it's a nice gesture to show that, to make someone not feel used, because, like, particularly if you're talking about sleeping with women, like, there is a lot of, like, a, a shitload of complicated societal and personal issues that goes into women having one-night stands, and f or feeling like they're having one-night stands, or feeling like a slut, or yeah. this, or this, or this, like... And just that act of saying, like, hey, would you like to get lunch tomorrow was, like, really good for me and making it not feel like it was just a thing and they got what they wanted and they left. Yeah. So and it's yeah. not like that person will even necessarily agree on that, you know, but mm. it's just, like, a, it's a nice gesture for sure. Yeah, it's a nice gesture. Like, it was very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, it, it was. It meant a lot at the time. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Especially because I was a lot younger and had a lot more, like, imbued ideas of, like, how one should yeah. be, you know. Yeah. Also be quite creative about the space that you're in, you know, there's not just like, oh the bed. Some of the hottest, best sex I've had was mm. like on the floor, even though there is like a bed next to yeah. us, you know, that sort of stuff. Like, so being creative about the space, but also don't insist on it. Don't be like, okay, now we're like, I don't know, yeah. doing this and do, or like standing up, you know, fucking standing up, although because like, for me, if I would like, that's just uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just yeah, and for that, like, she's like, if she's like rolling on her side, maybe she wants to be turned around. And, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so don't, yeah, make it, make sure that it's not just quite static in terms of like positioning as such, yeah. but also just thinking about the services that you have mm -hmm. around you, all of that. Stuff. And yeah, like different positions do different things, obviously, but also like, Particularly, like, I've, I'm part of this really, really interesting um, sex forum on Facebook called Oops, That's My Kink, that I keep mentioning, but it's really good. But, like, for example, there was a conversation recently about how a lot of women only... Okay, so a lot of women don't come from penetrative sex, and you should know that. But how a lot of the women that do come from penetrative sex only come if they're on top. 
and a, a lot of guys don't really get that much out of the woman being on top because it's not as much of an up and down motion as a back and forth motion. So like also be aware of what might make her like yeah, she might not come for pension sex, but it doesn't mean she doesn't want to do it. Oh yeah, I hope like, we don't even need to say this, right? Like yeah. the fact that defo just for pension sex, like for a lot of women that's fuck yeah. all like so. I can't come for pension sex. Like doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. Fucking love it. But it won't let me come. Yeah, yeah, very, very pretty. I think it's uh, just, just, just with it. Fucking make it three, four times yeah. in my life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's yeah, it's not a given, and be aware of that. And, and some people yeah. have maybe, and then, and then again, there is a glorification of that. Like there are plenty of women that probably be like, "Fuck, I get, I, mean, mm. I come from penetrative sex all the time." So that makes us look more complicated and or like harder, harder work. But again, we'd like to think that by talking about this we can like somehow you know change those yeah change and I'm sorry if you consider like going down on your girlfriend as being harder work you shouldn't have a girlfriend yeah <laughs> yeah yeah like and you know we also have to deal with like oh, use sex and the city phrase like teeth placement and gag reflex and 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 suction and all that stuff they feel they don't, like Samantha says they don't call it a blowjob for nothing like. yeah. <laughs> yeah there's yeah anyways so, yeah, hopefully there are a few, a few yeah, Watch there. her signals, like, she'll probably let you know if she's underwriting it. Yeah. Um, and if she won't ask, like... But yeah, there's nothing worse. We say, I, I can only just imagine the sort of stereotype of, like, drunken humping, like, when no one really enjoys it, it's just a bit dry and, like, very, very static or something, like... There is a place for it as well, but basically sex can be just so much more magnificent than enjoyable. Like even as a one I stand basically. Yeah. Like oh, and, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and um if you can like open your eyes to that, like and again, like now now I'm using I think Jamila Jamila, I forget her name, but basically goes like, Look, women talk, you know. Mm. You're gonna be known as like someone that makes someone calm on the first time, especially like oh, yeah. in Aberdeen, a small town I like You'll get you'll get some action. <laughs> yeah. But also another thing which is like a bit contradictory is like don't try and pressure a woman to come if she can't because like I like I, I don't come from pressure sex but I do from like clinical stimulation but only in like certain circumstances and with like a particular vibe and it's like it's kind of more of a thought exercise and it is a bodily thing for me personally. And so like it's also fine if a woman doesn't come as long as she's over with that. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's also, by the way... You'll be like, yeah, but I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, yeah. I'm gonna get that, get that. Man, like, no, like, the no. precious, like, orgasm when I've had, like, a few drinks or whatever is, like, so long. Yeah, yeah, it's only gonna make it last. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And also, like, obviously, the guy doesn't always have to come either. Just FYI. Yeah, yeah. Should be a given, but it isn't always. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Done that one. Should we do the last one? Yeah. Yeah, fuck it, because, yeah. What time is it? Fuck, we've been on for an hour and a half. Yeah. I mean, we still got like nine viewers. I don't know. We'll cut it up. Like, All right. it's another couple minutes. Sorry, I know it's becoming long, but it seems to me like at this point we're not doing it for like. Sorry, we love the live viewers, but we it's love not just for the just for the live stuff anymore. It's it's a bit more. You know, we do put it on YouTube, and there's lots of lovely views and like mm. two hundred and sixty subscribers. All of that stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Tell that annoying guy at work who's like a bit of a misogynist but thinks it's funny. Okay, so, last question. Hi, AAA. Love the show. Keep at it. Though it's sort of like your sound. Yeah. yeah we sorry. Know. Yeah. We, we do know. It's it, fund us. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a bit better for you too. Yeah, definitely fund us, honestly. Please. like I, I could get into why there's an issue with, with the microphones, but and, and I keep fixing it, but it's... it's I know this, basically. Sound, yes. Yeah, it, we're it we're running on a very low budget, like... Non-existent budget, non -existent, basically. Like, yeah. yeah. So... I'm surprised no one has asked this explicitly yet, but I'd love to hear your opinions about polyamory. It seems very about that polyamory. Uh, sorry, no. I'd like to hear your opinions about polyamory. <laughs> it seems very fashionable amongst the left. Have you got any experience? Does it work at all? Thanks. Right. Okay. It is popular on the left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for good okay. and for bad. So. Oh, my heart is kind of shaking a little bit. So yeah, I'm kind of, I have my own surprise for you how I got this question mm. earlier. And it's something that I sat, kind of managed to avoid talking about this whole time. But, um... Have you not dipped in? I feel like... <laughs> quite <laughs> <a bit. laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, to put my cards on the table, I am like, I think, eight years polyamorous now. So it's not a phase. 
it's a thing. It's been, I think, started maybe when I was about 20 years old. I'm um, coming up to 28. Mm -hmm. But, um, so yeah, so with, with um, serious, long, long time partners and sometimes, you know, and sometimes there are patches where for two years I'm not seeing a second person or anything like that, you know, so, so it's absolutely not like, well, that's all, actually I have way more conservative, I think, <laughs> sex life than a lot of my, like, um, monogamous peers as such. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a big part of my life, something that I don't talk about at all in public, uh, because it just, again, there's a lot of judgments about this, and for a good, fucking good reason, this is why I want to address that bit about the left, is... It's kind of similar, sorry, I'm just going to do a weird yeah, monologue, but it, like, it. um, it's a little bit similar to, like, animal rights activists, perhaps, where, like, the cause is fantastic. Or the vegans. Or vegans, yeah. The <laughs> cause is fantastic and really, really fucking important. The people doing it and the sort of aesthetics that they create around it and the mistakes that they make that actually forms the image of, of, of it is, is fucking terrible. So a lot of the time I'm embarrassed to call myself polyamorous because majority of polyamorous people, well, so-called polyamorous people that I know, are manipulative, I don't know, also braggy, um, actually involve themselves in a lot of very, very toxic yeah, relationships, and or they create this whole, like, you know, hippie, like, a whole hippie aesthetic around them, where it's just basically, it's just like, ooh, you know, everyone's just so chill and all that stuff. And also, like, shitting on monogamous people. Oh, yeah. As if, like, they're so basic and they're stuck in this, like, misogynistic, patriarchal model oh, of the nuclear family and yeah. can't they just be more woke already? Exactly. It's only, if only you, like, re like opened yeah. up to polyamory all of that stuff. No, 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 it's absolutely subjective. You know, and like absolutely not everyone can do this. I, you know, and it, it is a, a lot of hard work, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And I hate a lot of the stuff that come around it. I don't talk about it a lot because basically I'm fucking embarrassed by the polyamorous scene a lot of the time. But it's like yeah. when I was vegan, I didn't want to tell anyone I was vegan because I was like, I don't want to be associated with the like, yeah, the vegans, like, kind of like vegan yeah. student. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and actually, it's been a struggle to yeah. like find. Partners, because I think as soon as you say to mm -hmm. someone you're polyamorous, everyone just kind of assumes you're this that that crazy hippie poly couple that they have heard about, and it's just like it's not like that at all. It's a lot of the time it's way darker, sadder, but more like, more interesting. But basically, anyway. but all people when you tell them that you're, you're polyamorous, like they assume that therefore you won't love them fully, Precisely. which is a real problem. That like people misunderstand. As if like there is like a quota of like affection, and if you're already with someone, therefore your quota is half full, and you will not be able to be their like full partner. Exactly. There's this like an idea of zero sum game, right? Mm -hmm. Where um, it is it, it, the idea that like you can only have hundred percent of someone, and if you're gonna, but you know, in addition to that, then that the, the former partner will either be getting less, or the second partner will be hoping that they will be. Yeah, getting a bit of that attention, whereas like the way, competitive, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas the way I see it is just like you're doing polyamory wrong if you're not growing both relationships at the same time. You should also never do it if if you're in a bad place with your current partner. It's never, never date someone else out of spite. Yes, yes, that whole tit for tat thing—that's absolute fucking bullshit. And basically, what we're applying, what we're saying with polyamory is like it's not an open relationship per se. Like you don't just sleep around. It is. They are committed, loving relationships. But to be fair, like, so I've been in two polyamorous relationships. Mm, I don't know, I would actually, I would say one polyamorous relationship and one open relationship. And like me and Marianne, for example, have different models of polyamory. Like my model uh, with my former partner included, like, you can hook up with someone else and that's fine. And actually we didn't need to tell each other if we just had like a one night stand or a hook up or this or this. But if that progresses to become a serious, like, caring, emotionally engaged relationship, that's when we should talk about it and like, make sure that we're both on the same page, whereas your model, as I understand it, you don't include hookups hook hook at all in it. No. Yeah. yeah. No. No. I mean, again, that can change, maybe, at some... Uh, that's, that's not current something that practice at all, no, and um, really it is a search for meaningful relationships and yeah. such. Uh, which is fucking difficult, as you can imagine, especially now we're all getting a bit older as well. Like, it's, it was way easier back in the, uh, my early 20s, and it was kind of very fashionable in London, so everyone was fully Yeah, not so much anymore, hey? Not, yeah, yeah, funny, like, it is a bit of a, like, people... <laughs> oh my god, yeah. one of the most painful things that has happened to me uh, was someone that I was in a polyamorous relationship for, like, five years with. They then... Oh, I'm really now saying to me, fuck it, like, honestly, like, they have hurt me by saying that, I'm more than happy to yeah. s say no, what one shouldn't be doing, 
is, and then they found, you know, a monogamous partner, and then next time, well, I don't know, we spoke about maybe a year or two after our, our relationship, and then they kind of, just as a side note, were like, yeah, you know, I just, like, I just kind of grew up out of polyamory sort of thing. That hurt me so much, yeah. I, like, fucking cried in that, because it definitely implies, yeah, that there's just, like, there's a better state of being, and or what we were doing was not serious, and or... Well, no, 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 I think, I think, uh, but then I asked, like, um, you know, whenever we were doing it, did you also think, no, no, and to be fair, they were sure to be like, no, I think when it was with us, it was real, and it was genuine, and it was important, but basically, and find that, like, they're in a different stage in their lives now. But and the point is, know. you can choose to be poly, and you can choose not to be poly, and I've chosen both at different times in my life, but I would not privilege one over the other as being the more mature option, or the more sensible option, or the more lasting option, because I also know of polyamorous couples in their like 30s and 40s that have children and like well, also, families. I don't, I don't really see it as a choice either. I mean, I, I think... Yeah, for you it's not. I mean, for me yeah. it is, but yeah. Okay. You see more, more of like a part of your intrinsic way of negotiating love, I think. I think energy. it's just an, it's an honest, um, it's an, I don't know, it's an honest kind of, um, getting in terms to terms of, of, of my feeling that like people fancy each other and it's okay I just rather that that would be done kind of consensually and also you know without this kind of competition that's why I'm not really necessarily into hookups and all of that you know because I don't think it should be yeah I, I, I think I know what you're gonna say that basically I understand that people fancy each other so it's okay to just hook up and that sort of thing like, well, no, it's more like I only know I fancy someone if I flirt with them a bit if I like this and yeah, this yeah, and like, yeah yeah like, and I can't tell my partner that I want a relationship with this person until, you know, oh, yeah, 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 the... no, that's definitely, that's the, that's the sort of, that tricky part that we, I've been through quite a few times, yeah. where it's just basically, you, you, you basically, you tell someone that you are, you know, you tell your current partner maybe that you are interested in someone, you are going to find out how it goes, but it's not just the case of, like, sleeping with them and then leaving, basically yeah. that you are interested in developing a loving relationship with them. And most of the time it doesn't work because the other person breaks out and like, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and fucks off. And it's it's very sad because I actually have invested like feelings towards that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird to be... And it's weird. It's just like kind of this like public coming out. I don't know. Yeah, I know it's nothing as such, but I don't know. It's this... No, it's a thing. And it's a thing that's often misunderstood and, like, yeah. derided by, like, Guardian articles and, like... Yeah. It's either by, like, holier-than-thou poly people or, like, monogamous people, like, and looking at it like a silly pastime you do. And there's and no way I want to idealise it. It's so much work. Like, you have to basically, uh, you know, hold so much constant communication with your partners and so much, you know, I guess, uh, fight in your in your heart as well. Like, the idea that there's no jealousy is fucking ridiculous. Of course there is, but you have to, I don't know, just work through that. And when it works, when it actually, when there is that, that perfect, I don't know, moment when you do have multiple relationships and everyone is happy, it, it, there's just, I don't know, there, the, for me, there's nothing better than that. I'm sure that's how people feel when they just have the one and whatnot, but like, it's, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. It's just, it's, it's the best thing, but, um, but yeah, like it, it, it's rare. It's rare. Yeah. A lot of the time, it is just like a case of trying to reassure people. And but then I, I have a problem because I feel like poly people have to justify this kind of thing more, more. And I feel like honestly, it's also rare to be in a monogamous relationship and feel like everything's perfectly content and there's no jealousy and there's no doubt and there's no insecurity and this and this. No, no, I don't think working well. people, I don't think monogamous people talk about. No, because I think monogamous people like normalize jealousy and doubt and fear and the idea that their partner might be cheating them rather than talking about it openly, which is why I'm like kind of. I don't like monogamy culture. Like, I remember one thing my dad saying to me was like, oh, but you're like, okay with your like, boyfriend like, sleeping with other people? And I'm like, honestly, I'd rather he was sleeping with other people than he was thinking about sleeping with other people and not doing it and then not telling me. Absolutely. Like, that's yeah, the most agree. horrific thing. That's literally it. That's the kind of thing that's just like, I am, maybe again, it's like some weird fear of abandonment or whatnot. Like, there's just like this fear that someone's gonna like, find someone maybe that is like, better and then then you were not gonna like I don't know like honestly I haven't even never even internalized those feelings it's just like I started dating people when I was 17 by 20 I was polyamorous I'm 28 right now it's just all I've known at this point and it's just like I just I hate the idea that we I was with just with someone and and I would have to hide my 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 fancy towards other people, yeah. or to think that they have that and they can't talk to me yeah. about this. Yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah. And, and I just, I think it's absolutely fine to receive different things from different people. Again, as long as it's done in a consensual manner, I don't think I'm enough. Like, I mean, I don't know. I think, I don't think anyone is enough ever. Yeah. And it's just, and it's fine. No, one person can fulfill all of another person's needs. And it doesn't have to just be through like multiple partners, it's through like friendship groups and this and this and this, but like, and again, like, that's, that's not to say that I am not into, like, like 40-year relationships and dying with someone that I fucking love, because I am, I've only, literally, I've only been in, like, long-term relationships, yeah. that's the thing, it's like, I, I, I just think it's absolutely realistic to be in incredibly long-term relationships, but as polyamorous people so this is not a rejection well, of of happily ever after no it's, but it's very very toxic to assume and to expect one person to fulfill all of your emotional and like romantic needs that's that's a very dangerous but it situation. happens of course like there are all these you know so many of my friends parents but even yours and like some uh, any of uh, well, a lot of others you know they're just like you know they, they meet they fall in love and then they have children and they die of loving together and sure, all that stuff but it doesn't mean they never fancy anyone else or whatever like there's also shit there's of divorces and affairs like yeah you know and that's okay as well like yeah anyway, so basically it's a different way yeah. exactly it's a different way so yeah, thank you so much for the question it is weird that like no one has asked us about and this and if you have any other questions about your polyamorous scenarios or whatever we'd be happy to answer them because yeah. we come from different perspectives but we're kind of aligned on the idea that like Polly is something that should be talked about and should be, if not encouraged, but at least supported. But like, um, yeah, but also to completely, completely uh, not underestimate the fact that my majority of polyamorous people are fucking terrible. Like they fucking are. They use polyamory to fucking be toxic in their relationships. Like I. But also the most monogamous people, so you know. Yeah. Toxic people be toxic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but again, we also we're quite aware we don't want this to just become like. A, a show for lefties by lefties mm. as such so that's why the, the the questions that fascinate us the most are the ones that are talking about that you know the 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 very very slippery line when someone you know yeah goes from i don't know that is that they're in between the two fields of being you know progressive yeah. feminist and and we aren't the words that all right who are much better about talking about well, not that they're talking better stuff, but they're at least talking about these issues. Whereas, yeah, as I'm the left, we're like, it. for all of our, like, you know, polyamorous aesthetics and bullshit and, like, all the, like, love, 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 like, we're fucking terrible talking about our feelings. Yeah, our. and particularly talking to men about the men's feelings, like, it's mm. really under underappreciated as an important field on the left. Yeah, uh, something, again, about the uh, police stuff is, like, what I found um, to do with men is just that um, it's much more difficult for a polyamorous man to find partners actually than this for a woman and I haven't had that well I had some luck but um, it's still easier for me because for the dudes they the, the women a lot of the time assume maybe sometimes rightly that the dude just like mm -hmm. wants it all just wants two chicks you know that stuff yeah there's so, a lot of like yeah like stereotype issues about yeah, like yeah, the guy yeah. with multiple babes who's like oh who follows me like, yeah yeah so basically like I would be sometimes with two partners and then like I would encourage my partners to you know also be polo if they want to if they want to absolutely there were some that totally were just like monogamous they were just with me and that was perfectly fine as well but if they do want to and they were like made like I'm trying like they just assume that I'm trying to like I don't know I'm trying to get some uh, some sort of yeah. play date next to you or something and that's bullshit and that's sad and I don't know I don't know so it's this whole fucking world that again as I say I don't talk about at all in public but it's it's a thing. Yeah and if you have any more questions about it send us our way. Yeah. Alright kiddos. Should we wrap up? I need to pee. Oh we look so yellow. Yeah we're super yellow. That's oh, summer time. And also it dropped to six views. Well no one is interested <laughs> in our relationship status. What the fuck guys? <laughs> Okay, anyways, yeah. uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll be putting them on YouTube as individual videos shortly. Yes. Um, Hopefully that was of use to you. Uh, any more questions, do send them to the Curious Cat link, which is on Maren's post. And uh, we're definitely going to see you on the 31st of May, where we'll be... I don't know if we'll be live streaming, maybe, potentially, we'll but there might be internet issues and whatnot. Which will be a live show, so we'll literally have an audience, which will be crazy. And we hope we'll still be as open as we are. Yeah, yeah. Like a few drinks and of course we will. Yeah, so don't forget to give us some Tisky money. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you can. Course, you can. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. yeah so thank much. you so much for watching. And thank you so much, Rowan. Thank you, Rowan. Yeah, we're just, we're, we're loving this. This is a really great project. And yeah. yeah. It's awesome. All right. All right, bye. Bye. Oh, wait, I need to go back. <laughs> wait, wait, I need to pee. <laughs>
Stop broadcasting.